When you see a scene like we looked at earlier, does the director in you want to remake it ever? Oh, sure. Do you? Yeah, you wish you'd reshoot it, recut it. Because yeah. of what you've learned in the meantime or things you didn't do then, or, or both? Well, you instinctively say print the moment a take works for you. And I usually prepare very well and do a lot of homework and then rehearse it yeah. considerably so that I get that first take, mm -hmm. maximum. Rarely do I go more than two takes. But then after the fact, when you look at it years later, you wish you could do it over again. And I yeah. guess it's because you have learned or you, you could have done something more. As a director, not as a performer mostly. As, as a director. As a, as a yeah. director, yeah. yeah. Well, the performer gets away from you sometimes. Sometimes uh, the petulance of the actor, the childlike needs and tendencies of the actor can yeah. overshadow the director's thinking and you have to split yourself so totally. Very often he can take over and you don't yeah. know what's happening. It's schizophrenia. Uh -huh. Have you had bad emotional blows in the business? Uh, I don't know if, you, if you'd rather never talk again about the split up with Dean Martin, but I feel at the time that was quite a... a no, that was a, a marvelous of... 10 years. That, uh, he built me a lovely home in Bel Air. I'm very grateful to him for that. But once the relationship became rusty, uh -huh. we were both wise enough to know that it couldn't continue. But that's a blow like a man and a woman getting divorced, or a blow like any relationship that was important and then became uh, thinned out, as it were. Mm -hmm. But that's so long ago. It's like talking about Lindbergh, you know. Yeah. I want to talk about now and tomorrow. Yeah. Think you'll see Martin tomorrow? Uh -huh. He might. <laughs> if he's with Sid Charisse, I will. <laughs> I, I'll get off that subject, but I mean, if you, if you knew he was at a party and you were invited, would you, would you avoid it just because it's... No, 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 no. I would probably be very anxious to go. Yeah. I don't know what would happen at the time. Is there a talk you hope you'll have someday about it all? Or have you ever really gotten to thrash it all out? To... I really don't think that that's feasible. I don't know that that's something that would happen. Because mm -hmm. he's the kind of a guy that would not like to do that. And I'd respect that. And if mm -hmm. I saw him tomorrow, it would be just like we never left one another. I would do the first joke that I would think of that would recall something that would make them laugh, I think. Yeah. That's like asking a man, what would you do if the house was on fire and your children were screaming, please help me, Daddy? I love the fathers that say, oh, yes, yeah. I would go and help them, knowing full well I would die. I think that's a lot of garbage. Yeah. I think you have to yeah, have no. it happen. Mm -hmm. And only then, and I would like to think as a father, hopefully, that... Uh, the good Lord would let me do the right thing. I'd like to save them. Yeah. But for me to sit here and tell you that's what I would do, that's, that's just, yeah. that's foolish. I don't know. Yeah. I'd like to do the right thing, but until it happens, I don't know. <coughs> changes, you didn't know changes you were sitting scene. with Norman Vincent Schwartz, right? <laughs> <laughs> the, it seems funny to say you've had greater success anywhere than you have here because it's been so giant in this country, but it does seem that in Paris, you are idolized to an even greater degree than your audiences here, you know, uh, come to see you. Um, you know, they write whole issues of film magazines about you there. And, it's, a and whole different, it's a whole different world in Europe. What, what is that? In France particularly, I wonder. Well, it's happened in the Netherlands, it's happened in Spain, mm -hmm. Italy, Germany. Uh -huh. um, I mean, it happens with American jazz artists, it happens with a lot of American yeah. entertainers. My you last film in Germany just played 60... I think 64 weeks first run mm -hmm. in the most important theater in Berlin. Uh, so that's happening there now. And right. I think it's only because uh, they don't have the time or the, the inclination to look at so much that there is to see, such as spectator sports and uh, 18 hours of television a day. Uh, I think the American public uh, is somewhat overstuffed. And the excitement of seeing someone that they really like and want to be excited about has been diminished mm -hmm. by the fact that their nerve ends have been, they've been honed down because there's just so much. Now I'm the I think so. Yeah. And in Europe, they only have television. In France, maybe two hours a day. And they're mm -hmm. still very excitable about things they like and enjoy. And they have the time to examine it. They mm -hmm. go to the theater like we will go to possibly an inauguration here. Yeah. They make it that kind of an evening to go to a movie, uh -huh. very special. Uh -huh. And uh, they're maintaining the cinema. We got the word cinema from them, which gives it tremendous respect and importance. 
And people that love film go there and they walk away as a technician or as an artist, feeling fulfilled and satisfied. When was it you first played there in person alone? And they last year, last April. Carried you through the streets and all of it. Yeah, last April. Yeah. It was really unbelievable, unbelievable. Something that I would do here for an American audience, as I did the other night, closing uh, in Boston, it may take about two minutes of a mime piece that I do. Mm -hmm. In Paris, it ran seven and a half or eight minutes. The same identical bit. How, just because of the, what, applause? Or you padded it, or you improvised They recognized it? more things in it, uh -huh. and they would draw upon your resources and draw upon, upon your inventiveness to make it a broader piece of mime. And consequently, I would do a show there for 85 or 90 minutes that would run here for 60. Mm -hmm. And it was all the extensions of their laughter and uh, bravo. They would, they, many, many times they read things into a thing that you've created that isn't really that great. But you can't tell them you're nuts. If they're enjoying it, let <laughs> no. them enjoy it. I'm sorry, we gotta take a pause. I didn't mean any harm. Oh, we'll be right back. Okay. <laughs>